in part four, chapter 29 of Coming of Age in Mississippi, Anne is welcomed back to the Canton Freedom House in May 1964, and she immediately begins preparing for a march. She was astonished by the number of adults attending the march and moved even further when they began singing the spiritual O oh Freedom. She thinks the older black marchers hope in heaven, while the younger activists know the power to change things was in themselves. Her hope returns. During a march to the courthouse, two cops harass teenage activists with racial slurs. The confrontation escalates, and the cops beat a young man so badly, the crowd thinks he's dead. The emotional protesters gather to discuss what to do, and several volunteer to march to the jail and risk arrest. An elderly man leads the march and bravely stands up to the cops. The beaten young activist, McKinley, survives. But soon, Ed King and a group of core activists report police violence on a car trip. Anne participates in Tougaloo's graduation ceremony. Not only does she feel lonely without her family, but she's not sure what will come next for her. She and her two activist friends, the three Woolworths orphans without families at graduation, eat dinner at Ed King's house. Anne realizes how much she's come to respect the white minister. She plans to work with the Civil Rights Umbrella Organization, COFO, in the summer. Anne goes back to New Orleans, where Adeline surprises her with a new dress. Adeline also says she may get a college diploma too. In this chapter, Anne sees how, despite the brainwashing of white supremacy and the conditioning, which once seemed so strong, many older black adults have signed on to the movement. They value the chance for freedom after all. When the cops turn aggressive, the protesters are again confronted with the question of the best response. They're more familiar now with the practicalities of going to jail and the probability of repeated violence. The determination, unity, and courage of the marchers who approach the jail and the silent strength of the elderly man show Anne how much the movement has coalesced and unified. But as soon as the cops see a successfully organized effort from the movement, they redouble their resistance. Anne isn't sure what comes next for her, but she knows the road ahead is still long for civil rights.